Our guest today is a gent whose career journey has been a remarkable odyssey to witness and to learn from. Starting in West Africa, moving to Spain and Southwest England before leading him to that singular spotlight in North Wales at Wrexham Stoke Kairas. Iconic sci-fi author Octavia Butler once said that, quote, the big talent is persistence. But it takes something more than persistence, something even bigger to be able to work your way from the ninth tier of English football and a full-time job at a recycling centre to becoming an essential part of a Wrexham squad that's fighting for back-to-back promotions with the entire world watching and then to represent your own nation at the African Cup of Nations to boot. What a story. What a gent. It's a true joy to raise my glass of stoke and welcome... Mr. Jacob Mendy. Wow, what, a, what an introduction, I must say. <laughs> no, really, thank you. Yeah. And um, hi, Rog. Well, Jacob, what a life. The introduction is just a reflection of what you've achieved. And I want to talk about it all because it is amazing. But first up, I want to talk about you for a quick second. I love watching you play. Wrexham manager Phil Parkinson, he said, you're the kind of player who will, quote, go the extra yard to turn a draw into a win because of your tenacity and your fight. How would you describe your playing style to someone who hasn't had the joy of actually witnessing you sprint down the wing with their own eyes? <laughs> I'll probably say that uh, tenacity, um, I'm quite stubborn, so... I like to go up and down the wing. Um, uh, obviously, a speedy player. Uh, I like to work hard. I'll, I'll, I'll basically, I'll, I'll probably say, work hard worker. You know, up and down. You know, doing the best for the team. Whatever, anything that the team needs in my side. Your story begins in the Gambia the smallest nation in Africa, one that's actually slightly smaller than the state of Connecticut. Your family moved to Madrid when you were just six years old. You were part of the youth system at Atletico Madrid. As a teen, you played for Atletico's second reserve team before it was disbanded. Joining Puerto Bonita in the fourth tier of Spanish football back in 2015. Jacob, when you were playing there, Fourth tier Spanish football. What did you imagine that football could offer you? Did you dream of one day playing in La Liga, or was it just about being able to catch on and make a living? Um, at that point, it was a really uh, low point in my life, you know, because I was just getting just got um, kicked out of Atletico Madrid, and and I had to find a team. I went to men's football. I was just a kid uh, trying to play football, and uh, and um, everything. Um, went hard for me, but um, luckily enough, you know, I'm, I'm quite, as I said, um, I'm quite stubborn, and I, tr- I try to make my way. Obviously, the the the, the dream was always uh, to make it into La Liga, so still chasing that dream. <laughs> you, know, Matthew McConaughey, who's one of the very few celebrities who hasn't actually made it to the Stoke Kai Rash yet, he once came mm-hmm. on this show and he said football. It was essentially the greatest invitation in the world, that you can be anywhere in the world, no matter what language you speak. If you see someone else playing in a pickup game, you can just walk up to them without introducing yourself and just get stuck in. As a kid in Spain, a new nation for you, a new environment, a new culture, was that your experience? Was football originally a way for you to fit in immediately? In Spain, um Definitely yes, yes. Um, I remember um, when I when I moved to Spain. I, obviously, I barely speak Spanish. I couldn't speak Spanish. I had to learn. But um, luckily enough, um, I had a, a friend who used to help me and support me in that journey. And then he used to play football. And one day he took me with him. Then I started playing football and make, make, meeting a lot of people. You know, making friends and everything started from there. To be fair. You a young player. You were a defender early. I know that you admired Barcelona's unbreakable Eric Abidal, and you've said yes. that you dreamed of playing on the team with the now retired Gerard Piquet. By the way, Ryan Reynolds, if you're listening, you could still make that happen. But you once said, mm-hmm. "Everything I know about football, I learn in Spain, because everything there relates to football." What were some of those early lessons, Jacob? What did you learn in Madrid that you've carried with you throughout your career? 
Uh, I've learned. Uh, I've learned to be patient. Learned to, to to always try to find the right option in every single situation in football. I think um, that that is something that really um, probably portrays how football is in Spain. You know, the patient. You know, to always find the right path. The mental side of things. Yeah, the ment- on the mental side of things. You know, I've learned to to be. Uh, tenacious and 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 brave and and you know to try things and obviously I've learned um, that you know when you're consistent on 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 something and something you want or you're chasing something if you're consistent you will end up getting it. Uh, if only I've got to tell you it was that easy. You make it sound easy, but it takes a lot of skill as well as that mental side of the game. But tenacity really is your I mean it's your life motif when you were nineteen. You move from Spain to Kent, um, which for those Americans who don't know, Kent is more like a state of mind than a place. Southeast in England, your dad had relocated there to work to help support your family. And you began to put in 19 years of age, 12 hour shifts at a recycling center on building sites, part of a cleaning crew at a convention center in London. And after and only then that you clocked out of work, you travel two hours to train with Red Hill FC in the Combined Counties League. I think you earned $75 a week to play in the ninth tier of English football. Tell us what it was like. You know, we know football from the the, the glamour of the, the Premier League, just the the, yeah, the crackle, the, the commercial sheen. What was the Combined Counties League like for you, Red Hill FC? Obviously, coming from Spain and, and you know, the, the team I played for and, and the division I've just literally coming from, which is four, which was fourth division in Spain, then going to the ninth tile in England was a bit of a, you know, there's a, there's a lot of difference, you know, the, the quality um, jobs, obviously, the the weather, you've got to consider the weather, the, the pitches, and, um, yeah, the, obviously, the, the quality in general of everything. Um, I did struggle a little bit at the beginning, you know, especially with the language barrier. Um, and then obviously I just let my football talk and, and everything, luckily enough, end up ending up. Well. I mean, I love the way you make it seem, again, so frictionless, um, Jacob. But you're working 12-hour days. You're traveling two hours to train. Um, you know, you're getting such little financial return back. It's the ninth tier of English football. I'm imagine like that first elbow to the side of the head uh, must have been a bit of a wake up call. What were you imagining on those long rides to training? When I hear your story, that's really what I think about. What kept you going day after day after day through the exhaustion of it all? Well, I had a dream to chase. Um, I had a dream. I was chasing a dream. That's why anything that I put in front of, in front of me, I'll just try and take it out of my way and, and keep going. I remember. Um, this is a funny story, but I remember obviously I used to work, study and play football and I just, I was mentally tired. I, I was, I, 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 some nights I would just sleep three, four, five hours and uh, I had a conversation with my dad and, um, he said to me, I need to drop, I need to stop doing something. And he suggested me to stop playing football. <laughs> and, uh, I said to him, I'll, I can stop anything else, but I'll not stop football. Uh, I'll definitely chase my dream because I, I believe in myself and I believe that I can make it. And you know, fair enough, he was like, "Fair enough, you. If you, if that's what you want, chase it then." And um, here I am. He believed in me as well, and uh, um, yeah, I'm still trying to prove a point as well, not just to me, but to my dad as well from that conversation and. And yeah, it was it was tough, you know, having to work twelve hours wearing boots, and then then having to go training, you know, um, definitely uh, something tough. But that's something that made me stronger as well. And, you know, you go through adversity in football, in games, and in, in life, and that I definitely learned a lesson from there. So essentially, you had work, you had study, and you had your football. Your dad was thinking that the football should go, and you're like, Dad, the study, it's gone out the window. Um, yeah, definitely a study. <laughs> but you say, you say also, you know, footballers, when you interview them, they always say, I back myself, I back myself. You really did back yourself. I mean, that ultimately, you were saying, 
the football, that's going to have to be my future. And you said you had a dream. You're in the ninth tier, Red Hill FC. I mean, we all have dreams. I don't want to project. Mine never came to pass, obviously, Um, although I still believe they will. What was your dream, Jacob? What did you think was possible in the combined counties league? Uh, my my dream has always been to make it to the top, you know, play with the biggest players, biggest teams. Um, but I also knew that to fulfil my dream, I need to dream on a short term. So I used to, um, you know, had short dreams like, oh, I'm in the I'm in the ninth there now. Let's let's try and make it to the eighth. You know, next season, let's 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 get an improvement here. Start um, slowly, slowly to to make it to the top. You know, and um, when I, I remember when I signed from when I signed for Red Hill, um, when people realised how low that is, that people that knew me, how low that league was, I just said, look, I don't speak English. You know, uh, I've, I'm coming to a new country. I've got no friends. Um, I need to start from somewhere. And, uh, and there it was, Red Hill. I mean, that that is the baseline um, that you came through. I love this. Big dreams with short-term goals, uh, which I do think um, for anyone in life is really the way to go. There's like, um, there's there's just a a fantasy, the big dream, and then there's very pragmatic step-by-step-by-step. That fusion is what gets you places. And Jacob, you did start climbing the pyramid you started climbing like Tomb Raider, moving up one season at a time, going from Red Hill mm. to Carshelton Athletic to Wealdstone in 2019. You were the team's player of the season, crucial part of their successful promotion from National League South into the National League. And with Wealdstone, the mighty stones, you know, you have won promotion, experience promotion, something which has become a motif in your career. When you do gain promotion no matter what level it's at is it something that feels that the same kind of joy regardless of which league you're moving from and to yes definitely you know um being being a um the champion on 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 whatever league you you are it's, it's not it's, it's always great you know it is um it's something positive to bring to to your to your dreams to your goals you know if you play for a team and you do well and, and then that team gets promoted, then you closer you one step closer to your dream. And um I've always looked at it that way. If if I get promoted next season, I don't really need to move to try and get a move the league above. I already got promoted this season and I'm doing well and, and I'm I'm an I'm an important player in the team. Um then then you look at things like, okay, how am I going to perform now in the next level? You know? How um I need to prove myself again in the next level. I think that's that's been me this whole year, this past year, me proving myself after year after year and after year. And now, like a surfer on a big wave, it continues. 2021, you moved 10 miles east and five places up the table when you left Wealdstone to join Boreham Wood, the mighty wood in North London, on a three-year contract. As a National League player, a professional player, for the first time, you could finally stop working the other jobs. Take us to that moment. What did that mean to you, Jacob, to reach that point where you could finally put all of your focus, all of your energy, both mentally and physically, solely into your dream of playing football? Do you know, I remember when when that summer, the summer before signing for Borough Mud, um, my, obviously my... We know my dream, and I wanted to um, stop stop working so I can fully concentrate uh, in in football and put my whole energy into football. That summer was really a stressing summer for me because um, there was a lot a lot of talks with different clubs, but no one was really trying to make the move for me. You know, um, and I, it was a really um, um, I, I had to be patient, but at that moment I couldn't be patient. You know. Um, I wanted to to make sure this this was the year that I, I go into full full time football. What were you working as at the time, Jacob? At the time, I was working in construction, and I remember I remember me working, and and then any call I received from my agent, just stop working, get the call, and um, it was you know that 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 intense was that summer, you know, all the time um, looking at my phone with my agent, 
telling me something or, you know, I definitely wanted to move that year and, and you know, go another step closer to my dream. God, you and, must feel like, were you like, get me out of here? Just get me out of this, this yes, building yes, site. Definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, definitely, because it's, it's a hard job. It's a hard job. I used to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and, uh, and then go, you know, do that hard job and then go training after that. And obviously, I'll go to training not feeling a hundred percent, so I'm not able to to give my hundred percent in training, and and then that 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 shows in games as well. So I, I knew that that year had to be the the last year of doing that, and uh, and luckily enough, we did at Bromwood. We had a great season. The manager really backed me, you know. Um, he really signed. He really wanted to sign me, so um, he paid the release clause, which is the 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 most expensive signing for 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 Bromwood. I think they they've done enough an, an effort there, and um, yeah, I'm really thankful for that. And you became part of that remarkable Burham Wood team that left its mark on the FA Cup. You beat then League One side AFC Wimbledon. Your top then Championship team Bournemouth one nil. Uh, became just the tenth non-league team in FA Cup history to make it to the fifth round, where you face Frank Lampard's Everton at Goodison Park. I do remember watching you in that game as an Everton fan. Don't hold that yeah. against me, Jacob Mendy. But how do you experience no, a match up like that? Is it intimidating to face a Premier League side, or does it feel for you more more like aspirational? You know, you're looking at the stadium, the crowds, the opposing players, and thinking. God, oh, this could be me someday. Yes, it was. It was um, aspirational, as you said. Obviously, you look at it. You look at it, and um, you know I've never played in front of more than four thousand. Uh, well, before playing Bournemouth, but then you go into Bournemouth, where we had twelve thousand, which is incredible as well. And then you go into Goodison Park, which is forty thousand people. I've never experienced that in my life, so I was very nervous before the game. But then I, I said to myself. Um, you know, this is the time to prove myself, not not to other people, but to prove it to myself that I can I can definitely um, do well against these players. And and it's a, it was a test for myself as well, you know, test where where my levels at. And I uh, I knew I had to you know be mentally strong to to face you know certain players. And, and uh, I think I, I did. I think I did all right. But it was definitely. Um, I was definitely very nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm very worried. I say this to every Wrexham fan, Jacob, that you, uh, Everton and Wrexham are on very different trajectories and we actually might miss each other on the way up and on the way down. <laughs> but th- this is incredible to me. During that 2021-22 season, you played every single minute of every single game for Boreham Wood. You went the full 90 in 44 straight league games, five FA Cup games. I mean, Jacob, you've had to face physical challenges during a long season. Fatigue, just, you know, just soreness, you know, standard knocks. Mm-hmm. What, what does it take mentally to get yourself ready to go again at that level where you're playing often every three or four days from August until May? Are you, is it shattering or are you just like, I'm not on the building site, anything's possible? <laughs> that, last, that's, that last thing you said is definitely that. Um, obviously, you can never. I can't compare. Well, I've, I've lived both, you know, the the life of a footballer and the life of a you know hardworking person. And um, the you know comparing comparing them definitely anything that happens in football or almost anything that happens in football, you know, you just take it and it's fine. You know, you can be tired. There's days to rest. Uh, you can you get injured, you, you'll come back. You know it, it is fine. You got just got to be um, thankful for the situation we are. And and I was at that moment, you know, just coming back from just st- being a full time player, being able to you know wake up to do what I love in the morning. Um, that that's what get me going. That what that's what um, you know you know get me going every morning when I'm waking up, going training. You know, see see my teammates and doing that every morning. Uh, I just couldn't compare that to anything. Jacob, can I ask you, d- d- does it just become like a job or because you've had to work so hard to get to where you are? I mean, genuinely work so hard um, in a way so many fans can actually relate to. Is it something that you never take for granted? Definitely not. Definitely. I never take it for granted. I'm, I'm, as as I always said, I'm living the dream now, especially now that I'm at Wrexham. 
definitely living the dream. Um, you know, this is all I wanted. Obviously, I, I still got a lot of things to, you know, to take on my box of dreams. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm living the dream right now, and, and I'm definitely, I would definitely want more. Let's talk about the move to Wrexham, August 1st, 2022. After that incredible season with Boreham Wood, you were scouted and recruited by Wrexham. I think just three weeks before the first episode of Welcome to Wrexham premiered on television around the world. How much did you know about this show? How much did you know about co-owners Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney's on and off the field goals for the team when you joined? I've got to say, well, if I said that this, the previous summer was quite intense, the summer before signing for Wrexham was even even more intense. Um, uh, we've, they've, they've, they've been talks on going for, for a really long time. Uh, I really wanted to sign for Wrexham. And, and all, all my, 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 mentally, I was at Wrexham while I was at Boreham Wood, I've got to say. Um, you scored um, against Wrexham for Boreham Wood. You weren't mentally thinking about Wrexham then. <laughs> no, definitely not. It was a good goal as well for um, when I was at Wilston. I scored that against against Rob Rob Reino. I always remind him that every time he says something about me, <laughs> I, 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 I'll never forget that. <laughs> I make sure he doesn't as well. <laughs> yes, it was a really intense summer. Um, luckily enough, he ended up happening. But um, yeah, obviously, I knew what, what Rob and Ryan was was doing and what they were what they was trying to do, but. You don't really know. You don't really know until you 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 see it with your own eyes. You know, until you experience it, until you stand for Wrexham and you see what's happening in and around the club, under the whole town. You know, I think what they're doing is amazing, and 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 you know, is is great. It's great not just for the the um, the town, but for the whole country. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, as I said, uh, uh, that's that was one of the reasons why I wanted to stand for them, but. Um, you know, the project that's been happening in, in, in Wrexham is amazing and I think it's the most beautiful that's happening right now in football. So I definitely want to be, wanted to be part of it and um, yeah, here I am. God, I mean, by the way, tactically, did you have to prepare yourself or, or adapt for the cameras, Jacob, or did you feel like you were born for this? Oh, definitely not born for it. <laughs> I, I always get, um, obviously, I've, um, English is not my first language. It's not my. It's not even my second language. I struggle a lot in terms of when I try to express myself and being in front of the cameras. Really, I panic a little bit, and uh, I'm trying to get used to it. I'm starting to get used to it a little bit, but um, that's definitely something that I really try to work on. I've got to say, whatever you feel on the inside does not come across on the outside at all. But you come across so beautifully in the show. Uh, you come across oh, so you. beautifully on the field. And I am fascinated <laughs> footballingly. You talk about the project, how it is bigger than, than just football. It is about the town, the region. Um, you know, what are the biggest changes that you've experienced since you've arrived footballingly in North Wales? You know, the size of the crowds, uh, the international supporters coming into Wrexham to watch you, the, the cryotherapy mm-hmm. chambers. What, what's been the biggest transition for you? The biggest transition for me is the, I think the the level the level of the individual individual players, I think the level of the players have changed. It's probably the highest I've ever played with. You know, seeing big names, big players coming in. You know, in training, how much I, how much the, how good the quality is. You know, um, how much I try to learn from 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 the players. I'm still trying to you know improve every year every day and uh yeah I, i'm i'm glad that we've got these such a good players that i can learn from what, what what have you learned from trying to shut paul mullen down in training <laughs> i i i learned how to deal with very good strikers you know um and how sharp they are how smart they are and how they do things uh that that not not anyone can do you know like you look at um paul mullen's goal the other day if that was me, I'll, I'll try to control the ball and and then then think after. But he just thinks instantly when the ball's in the air and then he makes a decision and look, the correct decision it is crazy. And then things like that as is what I look at and and I think, wow, I want to learn this from him. I want to learn that from this, you know. 
the muscle memory, the instinct. I mean, when, yeah. when you moved to Wrexham, the club was about to enter its 15th straight season in the National League, where it had been mm-hmm. stuck since 2008, back when Twilight was a thing and everyone was debating between Team Edward and Team Jacob. As players, you've arrived. You know, you want to get out of the National League. How much does that history of, of failure, of repetitive failure, how much does it weigh on you? Or as a newcomer to the story, do you just take each game as it is? As a newcomer, um, you don't feel that weight. But, um, you know, if you have ambition, you definitely feel it. Um, if you want, if you really want to get promoted with Rex, and if you want to go to the next level, you definitely feel it. And, and you put that into games, you know. You um, put all maximum all efforts in, in, into the game. And uh, as players, I think we just we were just more focused on what, what's in front of us than what, what happened before. Um, we wanted to forget that and, and really make sure the, that was the year we got promoted. During a season two episode of Welcome to Wrexham, your manager, Phil Parkinson, uh, took a moment to not use the F word and decided instead to describe you beautifully as the kind of player who isn't going to accept defeat. Those are his words. Um, he also said, and this is something you've just alluded to, the stress of the transfer. He said they've made several offers to Boreham Wood. They tried to sign you multiple times before the club agreed to let you go. And that he, quote, liked the hunger that you played with. You know, that hunger, that drive, that tenacity, does that come from your personal experience? When you step onto the field at the Stoke Kairas, are you thinking about everything that it's taken, the long hours, working the extra jobs, the two-hour trips to train with a ninth-tier team to get to this point? I do. I do think about that a lot, you know. Sometimes I would just be at home or I'd be somewhere thinking that, like thinking that I am where I wanted to be a few years ago, you know, what I was, what I fight for, what I, what um, I was working hard for, you know, I just, sometimes I just sit back and, and think and, and, and chill, you know, I think that um, what I work hard for is really happening. So I got, I got to keep working hard to make the other, you know, the, the next dream come through as well. Um, I think I think um, having, by having that mentality, you just you know, you, if you don't get there, you're just gonna get there. If, if that makes sense, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. You, I think this, the word was you ch- you chase perfection, and you just if you chase perfection, you're gonna you might not reach perfection, but you get to uh, excellent something like that. God, I, you know what, Jacob? I wouldn't know. I've been chasing mediocrity my whole career, but I love your <laughs> approach. Dear listeners, be more like Jacob Mendy, uh, the two of us, every single time. Because it's worked for you. Biggest game of last season, the one that turned doubters into believers about Wrexham's ability to win the National League. You're playing arch rivals, Notts County, back in April. 69th minute. Nice. You slotted a Paul Mullin cross past the keeper from an incredibly tight angle. Even Pythagoras would have struggled with it. Um, delirious Ben Foster, Risto Steele uh, rounded out the game. Spoiler alert, Wrexham then win the league and promotion with a 3-1 win over your former club, Burham Wood, in that next to last game of the season. I've been thinking a lot about you in that moment. You know, Wrexham. Boreham Wood, promotion, the new level to come, the next step in your dream. As you stood on the pitch, surrounded by your teammates, with the fans just pouring out the stands to celebrate you, what were you thinking about, Jacob? What did you reflect upon in that moment about your own journey? I was just thinking uh, it was another another step. It was another step into my dream. You know, I was just looking around, see how amazing the, the, the everything looks. You know, the, the stadium surrounded with with fans and and us celebrating. You know, in front of my 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 previous team as well. You know, I, I think it was emotion. It was I was quite emotional at that at that point. You know, thinking that for the first time ever, I'm gonna make it into the league and I'll be able to play in, in the league football in the league, and uh, and um, which was that the next dream I had. My next dream for 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 two three years when I was uh, when as soon as I got into the national league, my next dream was can I make it into League Two? 
and uh, and um, it took me two years, took me three years actually, took me three years, and ended up uh, making it. So it was quite. I, I, um, I, I was at that point. I was just thinking, yeah, another step done, you know. And and the steps do not stop for you, Jacob, because June twenty twenty three, you were called in to represent your birth nation, the Gambia, for the very first time. Can you take us back to last summer when you learned you'd be playing for them? How did you find out? Who calls you? Who tells you? And what did it mean for you to first pull on that jersey for the first time? I've got to say how this journey starts is when... The, uh, so when, when I signed for... Um, when I was at Wilston, um, my, my agent, the agent I've got now, contact me. We met for the first time, and he said that he said to me that he see me, he seen me play, and he's got he believe he got a lot of trust in me, and he thinks in two or three years I can make it into the national team, into the Gambian national team. And what I did, I, I laughed. I said, uh, I, I didn't. I, he believed in me. He believed in that I didn't. And um, slowly, slowly, you know, going through the steps, I, 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 I could see that closer. And he, he just kept telling me, he just kept telling me. And um, when, the se- after the season I had at, at uh, Wrexham, he just, um, he just, I remember one day he called me and he said, I just had a chat with the uh, national team manager. And he said that he's, he's really looking at you and he's interested. Wow. That, at that point, I was like, wow, like, this is something I definitely wasn't expecting. You know, I, I wanted to, you know, go step by step. So it, it was, it's probably something that came before I even expected it. And, um, yeah, that, during that season, he, you know, he, we kept in contact with the manager. He sent me a message after games and that. And he ended up calling me in the summer. And uh, I truly believe that if I wasn't at Wrexham, I probably wouldn't have got that call yet. I believe that absolutely I mean it does feel like it, this happened with the Wrexham springboard the Wrexham uh, bounce the Wrexham wonder um, what did it feel like can you tell us your emotions the first time you pulled that um, that jersey on the Scorpions jersey for the first time it was just um, it was just a moment of pride you know a moment of pride I was just proud that, I, that I, I made it. I, I'm, I was proud that I could make my family proud as well, you know. And all my my, my parents would just would look at that and they'll be proud. And and you know, it, it was it's, it's always been a dream. So it was a dream that I fulfilled even maybe before I I, I even thought. And um, no, it was just I think pride is the the the, the word. I was at Wrexham uh, last month and I stood in front of the honours board of Wrexham players who've represented their nation in international football. And it is, it's a wonderful list of human beings. I'd say 98% of them, um, the Wrexham players represented Wales. And it was incredible to see your name, the latest to be inked in, um, representing the Gambia. And in January, you became just the second ever Wrexham player in the club's history to represent their nation in international tournament play, first since 2006. Jaco, it's an incredible achievement that you went to AFCON, the African Cup of Nations. Just a, I mean, just an immense experience for any player to be part of a, you know, just such a delirious tournament. What is your memory of that experience, and what did you learn from the whole thing? You know, in the, in that that journey was it was it was amazing because, as I said, I I'm living the dream. So being being able to be part of that 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 selection and be part of to be the people the players that represent the country, the way people look at you, the way people treat you, and the people that really had had a hope and in us and trust. Um, I don't know, just contemplating everything and, and realizing how, how lucky I am and, and, and how proud I am also, but how proud my family are of me and, um, well, family and friends. And, and it's just, it's just like, uh, 
I was just trying to enjoy the moment of being there and being around those great players and, and being able to, to you know, play against these top players. It was just everything, everything about it. It was a dream. Wrexham, currently, as we take three points behind league leaders Mansfield, who you will have played um, on the Friday before this comes out. And in League Two, the top three teams are automatically promoted. The next four then fight each other out in a playoff, which is like Fortnite, but with more corner kicks to gain that final, oh, Willy Wonka golden ticket into League One. As players, how aware are you of your place in the league table? Do you allow yourself to to think about the possibility uh, to do that kind of math three points at a time, or are you just focused on each opponent week in, week out? Um, right now, we just focus on, on, on us doing our job and, and get the three points every weekend because that's what will guarantee you the promotion. But we also... Uh, we also focus on 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 you know what can happen you know the result the other results and 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 you know we definitely want to secure the promotion straight and then we can focus on maybe winning the league you know we definitely want that promotion no matter how no matter what and um, we are we are chasing it we're definitely going to make it. I was going to ask you that because in the recent interview, your manager, Phil Parkinson, talks about this point in the season. He said it's quote an enjoyable pressure which I find hard to believe. But he added the excitement surrounding the last seven games is something to thrive on. That kind of pressure, which I guess you are all used to, that we men, uh, humans, are, are not. But can you, can you point a word to us? What do you feel going into the final month of the season? Uh, and what can you tell Wrexham Nation about what you expect to happen in the next few weeks? Going into this time of the season, you, you feel anxious you know you you want everything to end now and and you know be able to celebrate the promotion it is you know fans may think we don't feel like that but we we definitely do feel like that and even more than that um uh you know we just want this to end we we just want to get the promotion but we we do also do know that we have to fight for it and we have to give our lives and in, 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 on the pitch to, to you know to be able to 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 win, you, you don't just gonna walk, you're not just gonna walk and beat every team. So we are aware of that. But um, yeah, I'm I'm sure at the end of the season, the Wrexham fans will be able to to, to celebrate and, and and enjoy the promotion. What what, what gives you that confidence? Uh, the believing I've got in our in our team, our teammates, our um, uh, our all the staff, you know, the the manager, the, everything around it, you know, the the amount of work people are putting into into the club and 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 the, um, the, obviously the, the quality of the players we've got on the pitch and and you know I think things will work out on our favour. God willing, Jacob. I gotta say your journey is incredible. Proof that dreaming as a kid, um, those dreams may become real, but via the most unorthodox path possible. And I'm interested, you know, hearing your journey. What life lesson have you drawn from it all, um, from the Gambia to the Stoke Kairas? Um, it is, it would definitely be something along the lines of, uh, um, you know, if you've got a dream and you chase it and you work hard for it, it, it eventually it will end up happening, you know? Um, if you really want something and you definitely chase it and you work hard for it, you're definitely going to achieve it. I'm sure of that. You are. I mean, I'm fascinated. You've got... You've got hard work, which you have, I mean, more than pretty well any footballer I've ever spoken to. You've got mental tenacity, again, which you have, you know, if, if it was an EA Sports FIFA rating, you'd have like a 96 or a 97. But there's also skill, which you also have, but you don't talk about as much. What, what is well, the most important value that you think has kind of propelled your, your journey so far? My, it would definitely be my tenacity and hard work because um, um, quality, there is there is a lot of quality out there and there is a lot of people with, with better qualities than me. Um, um, I'm not sure if there is a lot of people with more hard work than me, you know. That's that's something that I probably have more than so, uh, most players. And um, yeah, I think that's that's probably what's going to, you know, get me a little higher. 
You've also dreamed big dreams. And unlike many of us, you've made those dreams come true from becoming a professional footballer to becoming an international footballer. You know, on the cusp of, I mean, I'm not going to curse it by speaking it out loud what can happen this season. But Jacob, last question for you. What do you dream of now? I dream, as I said, I put a short, um, short term uh, goals. My dream is to be in the League One next season. That's what my dream is. And um, be in League One next season with Wrexham, obviously. And then from next season, go, go into the champ again. And, and that, that's it, step by step. And hopefully make it to a Prem one day. God willing. Jacob, I've got to say, I hope we get to talk to you along the way. Um, Because your story is honestly inspirational. Um, Your quote, I need to start from somewhere, is honestly the best advice anyone who dreams of something bigger should always remember. I raise my glass to you. My glass of stoke to you, Jacob Mendy, to your family, to your continued success. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Courage.